What is idealism? What do the proponents of naturalism have to say? What is the effect of realism in teaching? And how would a pragmatist teacher teach? Also, what are the implications of these philosophical foundations to the teaching and learning process? These and more are the things that we are going to discuss today. Welcome back to our channel and welcome to Joy's University. Today, I'll be discussing four equally important philosophical foundations and their implications to the teaching and learning process. The first philosophy that we'll be discussing today is the philosophy of pragmatism, which is advocated by John Dewey and Charles Pierce. Okay, and pragmatism actually came from Greek, a Greek word, which means to do, to make, or to accomplish. Because pragmatism believes that what is experience in real life, what is use, useful to real life, is the reality. Okay, that is why uh, pragmatism believes in the functionality and practicality of everything. What is functional, what is practical and what is practicable these are the things that are supposed to be learned by students in school that is why uh, the pragmatist would claim that thoughts are thoughts must produce actions and that thoughts are uh, are useless if these thoughts are not applied because actions are far more important than ideas or than thoughts Okay, and you know, um, pragmatism believes really that the beliefs that we have, even the ideas that we have, um, are true only if they are workable, if they are practicable, if they are profitable. Okay, otherwise, false. That is why for pragmatism, it is very important that whatever you have learned in school, whatever ideas or theories you have understood and you have learned from your teachers should be applied. Because if these ideas and if these theories are just in the head, these are not applied in real life, then these ideas are useless. Because the most important thing that a student should look into is to apply the learnings that they have in school. So, what is the implication of this one in the teaching and learning process? You know, pragmatism advocates student-centered curriculum, meaning the students should be the center of the, edu of the educative process. The students should be the one to do everything. They have to, to be taught how to learn for themselves. They have to be taught how to be better individuals. The teacher should only be there to lead them understand things that they have to understand and to help them achieve the life that you, they would want to achieve and for the students to do that according to the pragmatist a student should be uh, immersed they should be working with groups and there is a need for these learners to be working with the group members with their classmates so that they would be learning something better so according to the pragmatist if a student learns from his classmates if a learner Okay, if a learner listens to the ideas of the classmates, then it would be a lot easier for them to understand the topic. So, uh, this pragmatism stresses that um, application of what have learned rather than transfer of this organized body of knowledge. That is why for pragmatists, doing is more important than knowing. I actually have met a lot of students who are really uh, very good. They could memorize a lot of theories and a lot of principles. They are academically good. I mean, they get high scores during examinations and quizzes. But when it comes to application of such theories, they're poor. Because there are individuals really who are very good. Here. They are very rich when it comes to this one, but they lack application. And for pragmatism, theories would be useless if you do not know how to apply these theories to real life. That is why curriculum should be framed according to the pragmatist on the principle of utility, of interest, 
and of experience. Utility, whatever is needed should be taught. Whatever is an whatever is needed to live life better, whatever is needed to solve real life problems, those are the things to be to be taught. Whatever is interesting for the students, those are to be taught as well. And whatever it is they have to experience later on in their lives, those are what's supposed to be taught in school. Because the focus should not be on facts, should not be on theories. The focus should be topics that would help you know, individuals solve life problems. Because according to pragmatists, this, I, this facts, these theories would not help a student to, to solve real life problems. All right? That is why the subjects to be taught must be must must help students solve practical problems like that of languages, of science, of math, agriculture, domestic science for that matter. And for pragmatism, the main subject matter of instruction is life. Anything that has something to do with life should be thought. That should be taught. Anything that the learner should 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 know and should understand about life should be taught. Because life is the main subject matter for pragmatism. That's why it's so important for pragmatists teachers to understand the content and at the same time to understand the application of such content to real life. Because if a teacher fails, okay, to let students understand the application of a topic to real life, then that topic is useless even if your students got very high scores in the assessment or assessment tool that you give them about that content the most important thing for pragmatism they do uh, they, they understand the theories but most important more importantly they know the application of such theory to life okay because living life all the necessities of living life should be taught in school all right that's pragmatism the second philosophy that we'll be discussing is the philosophy of idealism, which was proposed by Socrates and Plato. This idealism uh, believes that the world has two forms, the spiritual and the material. And for idealism, spiritual is far more important than the material. A person's way of thinking, of knowing, of feeling, and of acting are more important than material possessions, than earthly desires, than earthly things, than objects. Because for idealism, the prime aim of li the prime aim of life, rather, or the main purpose of living is to achieve spiritual values, and these spiritual values are the values that do not die the permanent values uh, these are the transcendent values because these values trans, uh, transcend time and space meaning kahit nag-iiba ang panahon kahit nagbabago na ang lahat sa mundo these values are here it didn't change these are the values that people during the old the olden times um acquired and these are the values that are uh, being acquired and continue to be acquired by the people nowadays and what are these transcendent values these are the values of truth of beauty and of goodness according to idealism once uh, the learners learn or understand what is true what is beautiful what is good then the learner's capacity to know, to feel, to will, or to act would also be harnessed. So that it is really very important according to the idealists that you have schools or teachers and parents should teach students how to think well, how to feel well, and how to act so that they may be able to um, have better life ahead of them. Now, according to idealism, ideas are the only true reality. Okay? Ideas are the only true reality. And uh, it's even more important than objects and materials. Okay? So, what is the implication of these one to education? Uh, since Plato believed that each individual, okay, each learner has his or her own version of ideal self. Okay? Pag sinabi natin ideal self, 
the kind of person this uh, the kind of person this learner wants to to be or to become the kind of life that he desires the dream that he wants to accomplish um, the life that he would want to live it's the ideal self and each of us according to plato has this we have our own picture of ideal self or of ideal life and the role now of the teacher and of the school is to help this learner attain this ideal self so in idealism a uh, self uh, there is really a focus when it comes to self um you have to give more importance to self to the to how you improve yourself to how you attain the ideal life and ideal self that you would want to attain that is why idealists believe that the main purpose of school and of teachers is to help each learner discovers his or her full potential the school and the teachers should help students become what he would that what he wants to become in the future the school and the teachers should help the learner uh, develop his or unleash his capacity or to fully develop his personality okay and there is also a need according to the idealists to inculcate among the learners that they have to be good they have to make sure that they, they they are good they live a good life so that they may be able to serve the community a lot better so you teach the learners according to the idealist to be good or to be better so that they would become better members of a society and once they become better members of the society then they there is an assurance that they also serve the community a lot better that is why the emphasis of idealism would be subjects that would teach students um how to feel and how to know how to act how to think like that of the philosophy literature religion and the history these are subjects for the soul these are subjects that would teach individuals a uh, proper way of thinking of knowing of feeling and of acting of willing all right so that's it and of course there is as well very important for the idealist to develop the character of a certain learner and the character development is done through emulation of examples or of heroes so if you would be an idealist teacher then you would teach values by means of presenting the life story of saints or of heroes in your own place or in the world and based on these life stories of the renowned individual the students would extract values from that and would tend to uh, to own the values and live exactly they'll be motivated to live exactly how these heroes and saints lived their lives so it's more of emulation the teacher gives um, different individuals who are worthy to be emulated by the learner so that is how values are being taught or that's how character is being developed by using the principle of idealism okay next naturalism on the other hand by jj rousseau and john locke this naturalism denies everything that has supernatural significance so meaning dogmas of the church the stories of revelation stories of supernatural being and supernatural creator uh, these stories do not have a space do not have a place for naturalism because for naturalism everything could be explained by science so if you do not understand something according to the naturalists uh, as a scientist study science if there is a thing that you would want to find out then go to nature go back to nature study nature study science so for naturalists there is no such thing as god there's no such thing as faith there's no such thing as ghosts okay everything that should could not be seen according to the naturalists are not is not true so ang lahat ng totoo ay nakasulat nakalagay sa science pinag-aaralan can be provided by nature
That is why the, the naturalism claims that truth can only be found in nature and in science. That is why in education, the focus of uh, the naturalist should be uh, the human growth and development. And everything that is given to students should be based on the stages of growth and development. All right. So because according to the naturalist, each stage, um, each stage, dapat teacher should know the needs of each stage of development. So if a child is grade 1, the teacher should know what is to be given to this grade 1 uh, pupil. If the person is junior high school or senior high school, then there is this uh, particular... Uh, particular learning or lesson that these students in this particular level should learn. That's why everything that a teacher teaches in the classroom should be within, okay, should be within the stages of human growth and development. And naturalists also believe that each individual, regardless of academic status, academic qualifications of economic status regardless of intellectual capacity must be taught in a democratic and universal manner whatever it is that is given to rich kid must be given to the poor ones the kind of education that is to be given to the elite members of the society is the same education that is to be offered to the members in uh, the poorest sector of the society because everyone according to the naturalist should be educated in the same manner and for naturalists the emphasis will be on physical development rather than the academic subjects like the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic. So the most important thing for the naturalist is for individuals to be physically sound. Dito siguro nag-ugat yung mga subjects natin like physical education subjects, lahat ng activities in school that would help individuals be uh, physically strong and physically healthy. Like that of uh, um, contested activities during foundation days, ball games, so sa lahat so there is a need for teachers and for school to develop physically sound individuals okay um, because that is more important than the three R's that's according to the naturalist and if I were to summarize in the naturalism everything we should not be believing in history in mystery rather we should not be believing in the existence of ghosts or existence of supernatural being because Everything could be answered by science. If you have questions, ask science. That's according to naturalism. And lastly, we have realism. This is the opposite of, I think, idealism. And this realism was proposed by Aristotle and St. Uh, Thomas. And according to realism, the world that we see or the world that we perceive is to be true. So everything that is seen is true. Everything that passes through our senses ay totoo. Lahat ng nakikita mo, totoo. Lahat ng nangyayari, totoo. So ang pinaka-distinct feature ng realism ay to see is to believe. Kasi kung what is, the, the qualities of life is what is real. The real thing, reality, is everything that is happening, everything that we see, everything that we ex that uh, we experience, everything that you go through. These are uh, these are realities, and according to realism, um, the ultimate reality of the world is not spiritual, but it's more of physical. And reality, according to the realist, is independent of human mind. Even if you do not think of it, even if you do not have any idea about it, so long as you see that, so long as it's existing, you witness that, then yun ang totoo. Kaya, sabi ng mga realists, what we believe now is only a fraction of the whole reality. So as we experience and observe life, we gradually understand reality. Sabi nila, what is true? So kung ano yung um, alam mong katotohanan ngayon, according to the realists, ay hindi talaga siya buong katotohanan. What you know now is only a fraction of the whole reality. And as you go on with life, as, as you experience life, the more that you have a better picture of reality and the more that you understand the whole reality that is why dito siguro 
uh, po, dito siguro nag-ugat yung tinatawag na lang the wisdom of the old or the, the old ones are wiser than the young ones because they lived life, they experience more than what we experience. And so if you have questions, you ask them. They have wisdom of everything. Alright? Because since mas matagal na silang nabuhay, mas marami na silang napagdaanan, mas marami na silang naranasan. And that gave them the ability to see the real picture or the whole picture. The whole reality for that matter. And in education, according to the realists, the most effective way to find about reality is to study it. By means of studying science and math, yung mga may definite answers sa lahat ng mga bagay, mga subjects na definitive, yung uh, accurate, accurate lahat, pinag-aralan, na sulat pinag-aaralan, lahat ng yun daw ay dapat pag-aralan for, no, for us to know reality. And the subjects and activities as well, according to the realists, not nasa curriculum, should be the subjects that would uh, allow students to be prepared for actual experiences. Uh, that's why the students should be given opportunities to experience realities based on actual day-to-day -day living. So in the classroom, it's so essential for a realist that students are given examples which are happening in reality. They should be given problems that are in the reality or that are being experienced in reality. They have to be given authentic scenarios, real scenarios, or present conditions so that they may be able to, to experience life as it is and they should be able to understand life or everything that is happening in life. That's why... The subjects that are being studied aside from science and math are nature um, and that of the vocation. Other subjects are of secondary importance. And dito rin ang mga realists also claim that it is really a lot better for individuals to be taught using the language that they already understand. Dito nag-ugat yung tinatawag nilang mother tongue, mother tongue based multilingual education. And this is actually the... the claim of the realist that students or children should be taught with the different subject areas gamet using the language that they already understand their vernacular or their mother, mother tongue so that they may be able to understand well okay the things that they have to understand in these different subject areas and the character development naman for the re realist is through the training of the rules of conduct meaning you will be trained uh, you are given you're exposed to a lot of scenarios and then you will be trained how to respond to the scenarios or to these life situations and it's only then that you are going to be developed or your character will be developed and the values um, will be extracted from all those real scenarios presented so those are the four um, philosophical foundations and their implications to teaching if you would want to watch the part one of our video um, then you could just visit the link provided below. You will be um, listening to the different explanations provided for other philosophical foundations of education. So this would be all. I hope you have learned something from this. Bye-bye. See you next time.